Hello everyone, in this video we're going to talk about conditional statements. Now the first conditional statement that we're going to go through is going to be the if statement. There's multiple different conditional statements that we're going to cover but the if statement is one of the most basic conditional statements and it's probably one of the most used conditional statements as well. So as you can see in our last video we were talking about bitwise operators so we're going to go and just create a new file. I'm going to call my file conditional statements.js. So we're going to start off by creating a file and I'm going to call my JavaScript file conditional statements if.js. Now, with our if statements, we can compare numbers and we can check our variables. So we can check that our variable is equal to something or that it's not equal to something. And then, based on whether that is true or not, we can go and do something else. So for example, we might want to check to see if your age is greater than 16 or equal to 16. If we know that you're 16 or greater, we know that you are eligible to work. So in this example, we're going to start off with our age. So we're going to say let and then our variable name, we'll call it age equals 25. So you can pick whatever age you want. I'm just going to pick 25 for this example and now we're going to actually start to use our conditional statement or our if statement and we just simply say if so if now keep in mind that this if is known as a keyword so for example if you wanted to create a variable like here we've created a variable called age you wouldn't actually be able to create a variable called if because it's this keyword and you'll see some different keywords as we go through this JavaScript course. You know, when we talk about loops and we talk about things like that, you can't use those as your variable names either. Now, what you could do is you could get around this by, let's say, adding another word uh, at the end of this. If you wanted to create an if, if you wanted to have the word if in your variable name. But just for this example, we're going to focus on using the keyword if and we're not going to worry about creating fancy variable names just yet. So we've got our if keyword and then what follows our if keyword is two brackets. So an opening and a closing round bracket. And inside these round brackets is going to be our conditional statement or our logic or what we want to compare. So for example, we're dealing with age in this example. So we would have, you know, age is greater than, or age is not equal to, or age is equal to, or some sort of logic like that inside these brackets. So I'm going to check to see if my age is greater than 16, because if my age is greater than 16, I'm eligible to work. So to do this, we'll just say age, our variable, and then we'll put in a greater than sign because we want to make sure that our age is greater than. And now we'll put in the minimum age that you can start work at. So in Ireland, it's 16. So we'll put in 16. Now, a good practice for this, we can see that 16 is put in here. And some people call this hard coding. And by hard coding, you're putting in this value yourself. So, you know, imagine, let's say, next year or 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 you know, in five or 10 years time, that the minimum age of working was changed to maybe 15 or maybe 17 or something like that, you would have to change this number in multiple places if you were making multiple checks. Now again, for this small example, it doesn't really matter because we'd only have to change our age in one place. That would be with inside our if statement here. But one really good practice is to make constants and we can make constants by you know having the keyword const at the top and then specifying whatever this constant variable is that we're going to use so we could say working age so working age like this and we could set this variable to 16 then we could replace this 16 it would be no longer needed and we could replace this with working and i can see that's a o there working age. So this would be a really good solution if we were maybe creating an application for ourselves or an application that was, you know, a little bit bigger than this example here that we're going through. You know, this is only for practice. So we don't want to get too caught up on having everything perfect. You know, 
when you are developing your own applications and maybe possibly you know working in industry or, or you might go off to college and and do this type of thing it'll be more important to have you know really good quality code but for now we can get rid of this so i'll just delete this working age and i'll put back in the number 16 and since we're not using working age i can delete this as well this is just to you know make sure that we're focusing more in on our conditional statement and that nothing else is confusing you but i just want you to note that it is good practice and to keep it in mind so now we can see with this if statement we have a red swiggly line uh, at the second bracket so this usually isn't a good sign it usually means we're missing something or what we've typed is incorrect so what we've typed so far is perfect the only problem is there's another little bit to the conditional statement and that extra little bit is these two brackets here now these brackets are slightly different these are curly brackets while the first set of brackets we use were round it is important if you use other ones it won't compile so your program won't work and i'm just going to bring these down to the next line to make it a little bit more straightforward so we're going to separate these and within these curly brackets is going to be what our computer does so if we wanted to add two numbers together or if we wanted to take two numbers away or if we just wanted to print something out to the screen whatever we want to do we can do it within these curly brackets and for this example i'm just going to print something out because it's the simplest thing and it's the most easy and straightforward way of understanding how these programs work so we're going to console log then we're going to have our quotes and we want to say something in here so for example if we look at this we can see that if age is greater than 16 okay so if my age is greater than 16 i want to print out something so for our example we were saying about if people were you know greater than 16 they would be able to work okay so we want to put in quotes here eligible so let's say eligible to work okay and there's actually a slight little problem here okay but I'll get back to that now in one second. So I'm gonna go and run this, and we can see that eligible to work is printed out. That's because we've set our age here to 25. Now imagine if we set our age to something else. So maybe we set our age to 12, and we go and run this program. We can see that we see nothing at all. So basically, we try and see if this is true, this statement, age is less than 16, and if this is not true, it's just kind of skipped. We go on to whatever code is down underneath it now. In this example, we have no other code. This is the only thing that we have in our program. So nothing gets displayed out here. But there's a slight bug here. Okay, so imagine I was 16. So if you're 16, you're allowed work. So if I go and run this, you'll see that I don't get a message saying that I'm eligible to work. So realistically, this age, should be greater than 15 assuming that our age can't be like you know 15.5 because just because you're 15 and a half you're still not eligible to work so it's important little things like this to understand and to get right so if we go and run this now we can see we are eligible to work but again using this example we could have an age let's say if someone was 15 5. so that's their 15 and a half and we go and run this we can see that they're eligible to work but this shouldn't actually be the output if you're 15 and a half you shouldn't be able to work so one thing that we could do is we could say if your age is greater than or equal to 16 so if we replace this with 16 and we go and run this again we can see that nothing gets displayed out and if we change this back to 16 we should get our outcome as eligible to work and we do we see eligible to work so that's just like little things like that when you're programming your own individual programs to so just keep in mind that your conditional statements are correct and think about uh, different inputs that you could get and how that might affect it like imagine what if we put in let's say a string in here right so let's say you know for some reason we're supposed to be getting in an integer right so we're supposed to be getting in a number i think we got in ryan and uh, if we go and run this what happens we don't get any result so that's what we would expect to see so that's good 
but this is part of testing your own programs you know testing different variables testing different numbers and seeing what happens and making sure or trying to minimize the amount of problems that your programs will have so i'm just going to go through one more really quick example so we're going to get rid of age here and we're going to replace this with name and in actual fact i'm going to delete all this just to avoid confusion and i'm going to say let so let and i'm going to say name and i'm going to set my name to ryan so i'm going to put ryan like this and now i'm not checking for age anymore because age has been deleted so i'm going to be checking for name and i want to check my name for something and i want to check to see is my name equal to ryan okay so remember if we want to check we use two equals rather than one and we can even use three if we want to compare it both type and content so we covered this in some of the previous videos so if you're a little bit unfamiliar with some of these things go back and take a look at the previous videos because in these videos from this video onwards you know we're going to be building on the things that we've learned prior to this so we're just going to put in our string here and we're going to put in ryan and we want to check this and we want to say right okay so we don't want this algebra to work anymore we want to change this because this is you know seeing if somebody's name is ryan so we might say hi ryan so if we go and run this we can say we get our message displayed hi ryan but imagine if i put a different name in here imagine if i put in chris right okay so let's run this and we see no output which is perfect because that's what we want from our program. We haven't made our program deal with the name Chris or any other names at all. And that's what we're gonna get into in our next video. Our next video is gonna be talking about conditional statements also. We're gonna be using if statements, but then we're also gonna be using this other statement called an else statement. And it's also a keyword, and it's actually really useful when we go and create programs.